So in this video, we're going to talk about the diode small signal model. And in the last few videos, we've been going over the junction capacitance, uh, CJ, the diffusion capacitance, CD, the diffusion resistance, RD. And we're going to synthesize these all together into one single linear model for the diode. And so how, how exactly are we going to do that? Well, let's just draw out the PN junction really quick, or our PN junction diode. Let's assume we're applying a certain voltage to it. Let's say this is a forward bias diode. Uh, we know we've got a depletion region. We've got some negatively charged ions on the left, on the P side, and some positively charged ions on the N side. And we also know that we've got some excess minority carrier, excess minority electrons on the P side and some excess minority holes on the N side. And those fall off with distance eventually going to, to zero at the edge of the PN junction. And so we know that the total charge, so the capacitance in general, we defined as delta Q over delta V. And we know that the total charge on one side is the charge, the delta Q from the depletion region plus delta Q from the diffusion uh, electrons. And the same goes on the P side. And so when we've got two charges adding together, this is going to lead to capacitances adding together because the charges in the numerator of the capacitance term. So the total capacitance for a PN junction diode is just the depletion capacitance or the um, junction capacitance plus the diffusion capacitance, CD. And that's because uh, C total is delta Q uh, of the depletion region of the junction charge plus delta Q uh, the diffusion charge all divided by delta V. And so this is our CJ term and this is our CD term. So we can add the capacitances. And this is equivalent in a circuit model into, if we say that this is one side of the diode, uh, so let's say that this is the uh, the positive side of the, the, the P side of the diode, this is the N side of the diode. This is equivalent to putting the two capacitances in parallel with each other. So CJ and CD. So our model is actually almost complete. The only thing left is the resistance, uh, RD, the diffusion resistance. And remember, RD is due to the change in current. So it's due to the change in current over the change in voltage, or rather the inverse of that. And the current uh, is caused by diffusion processes. So it's caused by these minority carriers diffusing. And so we would expect that since the same charge carriers are giving rise to two different phenomena, the capacitance and the resistance, that these two are going to be in parallel with each other. So CD and RD are both in parallel with each other. And you can go through a more mathematical derivation to show that this is in fact the case, uh, but the mathematical derivation is extremely painful. And so I, I wouldn't recommend it. And so this is it. This is the complete small signal model for our diode, or at least for the diode proper. And so anywhere you have a diode, you can just plug in this small signal model. So if we extend these wires out to the edge, um, anywhere you have a diode, you can plug in this set of capacitors and resistors, which you can calculate according to the formulas that we've we've laid out so far. And uh, let me just to erase that little that little knob just so it doesn't give anyone a headache. And so this linear model is an approximation of the diode. Now, we are missing one thing, um, and that's sometimes important and sometimes not, and that's that the diode is physically connected to the outside world. 
and it's connected via wires. And these wires have some finite resistance to them, so they're not ideal wires. Um, they're always going to have some some resistance. And similarly, the diode is typically packaged inside some kind of contact. And that contact is typically made out of metal, which also has some finite resistance. So we've also got this resistance that's sort of outside the diode. So it's not exactly part of our model, but we often include it just to be, just to be complete. And this is called RS. And I could split it to be on both sides of the uh, of the model, but it's it can equivalently just be lumped onto one side. And that's just because this internal voltage has no physical meaning, and so neither would this if I had a if I had a resistor over there. But that's uh, that's that's splitting hairs a little bit. So this is the complete physical model that we need to use for the diode, and. RS is typically in the range of a few ohms, um, so it, you might want to ignore it. Uh, the junction capacitance and the diffusion capacitance tend to be in the nanofarad range. Uh, sometimes the junction capacitance is much smaller um, in the in the picofarad range or the nanofarad range, depending on the on the diode. And RD is typically in the tens of ohms. So in the next video, we're going to do an example with this small signal model, but I just want to remind you uh, that all of these, all of these uh, components, essentially, essentially all of them required this approximation to be true. So cinch of delta V over 2 phi T uh, must be approximately delta V over 2 phi T. And for that to be true, delta V had to be much, much less than 2 phi t. And just to give you a sense of the magnitudes involved, uh, when delta v is equal to uh, half of a phi t, so that's about 13 millivolts, then our percent error, we have 1% error. So as long as delta V remains really small in the millivolt range, we're going to incur very minimal error with these models that we're using. But if delta V starts getting larger, then you always have to keep in mind that our error is going to get larger and potentially very large. So for uh, delta V is equal to about 100 millivolts, we'll get 50% error with this approximation. So always keep in the back of your mind that these are approximations that we're making. These are not always valid. And we need to have in the back of our mind what we think is an acceptable error for whatever application we're using. And sometimes we need finer than 1% error. Sometimes even that isn't sufficient. But sometimes eh, you're within two or three orders of magnitude, then you're fine. So it depends entirely on the application that you're using, but you should always keep in mind that this is an approximation and it's going to incur some error. So in the next video, we're going to go over an example using this small signal model, and we're going to give you some an example of some more typical values that you'll encounter. So thank you for watching this video. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them down below, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.